see you. Glad to be back, Sheriff. <laughs> you will have your little joke. Now, hang up your hat. Mm, now, let's see. Name, Asa Plunkett. Occupation, what do you want me to say it is this time, Asa? Treasure hunter. Treasure hunter? Why, that ain't no business. Yes, it is. It's a good business, too, if you can find a treasure. Anyway, all I aim to do this summer is to look for one I've heard about. Yes, I guess you can say it'll be my business. Residence? Well, when I ain't on board the Betsy Ann, I'm here. I guess you'd better put it down, the Betsy Ann. She's anchored off Fisherman's Wharf. Charge? While under the influence of liquor, bumping into and damaging Ben Randall's boat, Nina. The charge is false and unwarranted. Why, his boat swung right over into mine. And I was just as sober as... as you are now, Sheriff. Why, you can't get me tight. I drunk a whole jug of hard cider one time on a bet. Never took the jug from my lips, either. Why, it didn't even make me blink. Now, that don't seem possible. Sounds like another one of them yarns of yours. Gosh. Nobody seems to believe me when I tell the truth. Guess I'll have to take up lying to make folks take stock in me. Duration? Ten days. Well, I'd rather spend ten days in here than give that old Cromo Ben Randall damages. Comes at a mighty inconvenient time, though, Sheriff. How so? Well, the mackerel will start running any time now, and I don't want to be in here when they do. Oh, that's it. I thought it might be on account of Miss Prentice. I hear she's opening up her summer home here sometime this week. Ah, oh, I wasn't even thinking of Marsha Prentice. It'll be hard to find a story to tell Abigail, though. No. You'll think up some tale to tell her, all right. Mm. I hope so. I wish that judge would believe me the way Abigail does. <laughs> well, everything nice and comfortable, Asa? Oh, everything's just perfect. Well, in case you want anything, why, you know, wrap twice on the bars. Well, Bill, don't forget to call up Tom Squires and tell him where I am. I'm Marcia. Yeah. There it is. Oh, don't point, Abigail. Yes, there it is. Were you living in Stanbury Pool when it was discovered? Good gracious, no. <laughs> that was 250 years ago. Do I look as old as that? <laughs> Well, Uncle Ada was living there then. He told me so. Now remember, Abigail, you've got to stay away from Asa Plunkett. I kept your sister in New York because she wouldn't promise to stay away from Tom Squires. And if you want to spend the summer here, you've got to mind what I say. What are you grinning at? I mean it. Oh. How often must I tell you, John? Watch those bumps. Yes, Miss Prentice. How nice to see you. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Come on in. And Abigail. Hello, Libby. Why, I never did see a girl grow like you have. <laughs> you must be all tuckered out after that long automobile ride. Now, you just sit over here, and I'll have dinner ready. I didn't know what to cook, so I just baked some beans. They're always filling. Oh, why, that's splendid. You've got everything looking as neat as a pin here. Well, I just set to it till I got most of the house cleaned except the attic. Good. know just what stuff to leave and what stuff to throw out. <laughs> oh, are we expecting company? I see you have the table set for three. Well, ain't Betsy Ann eating with you? Oh, no, Betsy's not with us. Oh, she's upstairs now. <gasps> she came by train, arrived just ahead of you. I told that girl to stay at school. Abigail, now you wait here till I finish with your sister. Yeah, dear. You take your eyes off that child for one single minute. No, Miss Prentice. That's it. Where did Miss Prentice find you, may I ask? Oh, I'm from Brooklyn. Johnny Scores is the name. Scores? What a name. Abigail, will you come back here? Abigail. You can't go, Abigail. Miss Prentice said you shouldn't leave. 
No. She said you shouldn't let me out of your sight. Come back here, Abigail. Now, see here, young lady. I thought I told you to stay at summer school. Oh, Aunt Marcia, I just couldn't stand that school a minute longer. Oh, I suppose you think that you're smart enough already. No, Aunt Marcia, but, but I studied all winter and, and I was so lonesome for you. Lonesome I... for me? Fiddlesticks! What you had in your mind was that young Tom Squire. Oh, you know, Aunt Marcia. Now, see here, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. You and Abigail both take after Asa Plunkett's side of the family when it comes to telling the truth. Now, you're going right back to that school. If you don't behave yourself. <laughs> oh, stop! Now, look what you're doing. You're messing all my lace. Well, why don't you unpack? I can drive the car, Johnny. If you do very well, Abigail. I mean, alone. Oh, but this is a pretty big car, Abigail. I've done it before. Yeah? Well, all right. Now, be careful. There. Am I doing all right? <laughs> you're, you're doing fine, Abigail. Careful now. Oh, ca Abigail. Hello, Tom. Tom Squire. Abigail. Yeah, glad to see you. Come aboard. Glad to have you aboard, Skipper. Glad to be aboard, sir. <laughs> Tom, this is Johnny Squires, our new chauffeur. Johnny, this is Tom Squires, my sister's beau. Hi, Johnny. How are you, Miss Squires? Once upon a time, Johnny was in prison. Shh, Abigail, please. It was all a mistake, Mr. Squire. They got the wrong man. It's all right, Johnny. Tom won't tell anybody. If he does, I'll tell something I know about him. No, oh, don't worry, Johnny. If you're all right with Abigail, you're all right with me. Tom, uh -huh. what would you give me if I tell you something you like? Well, gee, Abigail, I, I don't think I've got anything worth swapping right now. All right, some other time. Betsy Ann's at the house. Betsy Ann? Well, I thought your aunt was going to make her stay at summer school. She was, but I told her if she just left without saying anything, Aunt Marcia wouldn't be so mean as to send her back. Where's Uncle Asa? Why, well, I don't know, Abigail. I, I haven't seen him for a week. Well, I want to see him right now. I might not get another chance to get away from Aunt Marcia. Come on, Johnny. Let's go and find Uncle Asa. You'll like him because he's dangerous. But we ought to be getting back home, Abigail. Oh, Aunt Marcia will be raising King with Betsy Ann for at least 30 minutes. Come on. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, Skip. Goodbye. So long, girl. Hello, Flora. Say, connect me with the jail right away, will you, please? Hello? Hello, this is Tom Squires. Who? Tom Squires? Say, can I talk to Asa for a minute? Thanks, Sheriff. Well, not at all, Tom. Glad to do it. Talk to you, Asa. Didn't you tell him I was busy? <laughs> no, I didn't think he'd believe it. <laughs> Hello, Tom. What can I do for you? Hello, Asa. Say, Abigail's in town. She's looking for you. She is? Oh. I didn't tell her you were in jail, but she's bound to find out before long. I thought I'd give you time enough to make up a good yarn about why you're there. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Abigail's in town. <laughs> you better think up a whopper to tell her. Well, I'm going up the house to dinner now. I'll tell you what you might do. You might take that broom and sweep out a little. It'll be exercise for you. All right, Sheriff. Don't worry. I'll look after things till you get back. Hello, Mr. 
I ain't seen him. <laughs> but I know where he is. He's over there, in jail. Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. Hello, Florida. This is Asa Plunkett over the sheriff's office. Say, call me back here in three minutes. I'll explain later. Yes, it's important. Might be most anything. Uncle Aizen! Well, Abigail, darling, why? This is a sight for sore eyes. So you come to see your poor old Uncle Asa the first thing, didn't you? <laughs> poor old uncle. What about that million dollars you got for Captain Billy the Kid? Billy the Kid? Oh, I, I spent that pretty quick. Uncle Aizen, you know something? I marked every day of the calendar, waiting for summer, just so I could tell you I love you. Mm. <laughs> Abigail, that's mighty nice. <laughs> but, but what are you doing in jail, Uncle Lisa? Huh? Oh, I was going to tell you about that. Well, you see, it's like this. See, they're not very pleased with their sheriff here. And I've had a lot of experience handling dangerous criminals. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. That's official business now. Hello, Stanford Fort Jail. A stolen car? What in the world did you want me to call you for, Asa? Oh, yes, Sheriff, yes. Yes, I got the motor number. Diane sakes, are you at that bottle again? Oh, that's all right, Sheriff. No, I can handle them single-handed. Oh, Uncle Asa, for a minute I thought they caught you for killing those two tourists five years ago. What two tourists? Oh, you mean the two that was making fun of the Betsy Ann? No, Abigail, nobody knows about them except just you and me. I told Johnny about the time you ran down and sank the Coast Guard boat off Indian Island. Oh, Johnny, you have no idea how many people Uncle Aze has killed. That's so. Have you found Blackbeard's treasure yet? No, 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 no. I'm looking for a new treasure now, Abigail. That is, as, as soon as I can spare the time. Remember last summer, I was telling you about your great, great granduncle, Ephraim Plunkett? Yes, the one who killed that red coat on Bird Island. Exactly. Well, last winter, I got to thinking. Before the red coats come, he collected all the silver plate in town and buried it over on one of the islands just outside the bay. Let's get the cat boat and go look for it tonight. It's the only place you're going tonight, young lady, is to bed. Uh, howdy, Marsha. Leave this place at once, Abigail. I guess you better repeat, Abigail. That is, for the time being. That's what Uncle Ephraim did when he had to. Come on, Abigail. Are you sure you'll be all right, Uncle Lisa? Oh, don't worry about me. She don't scare me none. I don't scare you, eh? Where's the sheriff? I'm the sheriff. You? Well, I am while he's out to dinner. Oh. You're nothing but an old reprobate, Asa Plunkett. And I warn you for the last time to stay away from Abigail. I promised my poor sister I'd bring up those two children, and I'm not going to have them associate with a man who gets drunk. Especially a man who gets drunk on rotten hoop... Inexpensive liquor. Now, wait a minute, Marsha. If I took to the bottle, it's all your fault. If you had married me 20 years ago, instead of suddenly discovering that we was 40th cousins or something, Maybe I would have amounted to something. Gee, Marsha, you used to look beautiful in that hat. It's the same one you got on now, ain't it? The flowers are different. Oh, what's the matter, Marsha? Did I say something to hurt your feelings? Oh, you! What's the idea of coming to Stanbury Port? Well, if this town is as easy as I hear it is, we'll be able to retire. Oh, there's the bank over there that Greasy told us about. He says you can get into it with a nail file and it's stuffed like a turkey. Well, I hope you know what you're doing.
never did see an attic so full of trash. Get to bed. Do you hear me? Yes, Lizzie, I hear you. Well, then run along. You've been fooling with that trash long enough. Abigail. Now lay down, sleep, pray, Lord, so keep, die before I wake, pray, Lord, so take. And please, God, one important thing. Please see that the map isn't phony. Just finished cleaning out all that old stuff in the attic, Miss Prentice. Will there be anything else tonight? No, you can go to bed now, Libby. Oh, did you close the door of the attic? Oh, no, I left it open to air. It's awful musty smelling up there. What do you want to do? Have that child catch her death of cold? The first thing you know, she'll be getting pneumonia. There's a terrible draft from that attic. Go on upstairs and close the door. All right, I'll close it, Miss Prentice. I'll close it. Claire, it's a good thing I have a double set of brains or I couldn't run this family. You must say yes, darling. But, Tom, there's so many reasons. Yes, why. and I know all the reasons, Betsy Ann. But I know I'll make my fortune some way. In two weeks, I'll be 21. And then, young lady, you're going to marry me. Aunt Marcia or no Aunt Marcia? Shh. <laughs> Don't talk so loud, Tom. If Abigail knew we were together, she'd blackmail me out of my allowance all summer long. The little skipper? Ah, oh, don't fret about her. By now, she's sound asleep. Abigail! Abigail! Where are you? Well, why don't you do something? D do, do what? Well, well, run around the house. You mean just run around the house? Yeah, just run around the house. And look for Abigail, you silly goop, you. Oh, why don't you look where you're going? Abigail! I 
bring that unless something's happened. Come on, let's find out what it is. Sure. Well, Grant, I thought I told you to stay away from this house. The idea of you two spooning when Abigail has been kidnapped. Abigail? Kidnapped? Yes, kidnapped. Don't you understand the king's English? Well, what are you standing there for? Why don't you go and do something? Go on, go on, on do something. Abigail! Uncle Eza! Uncle Eza! Uncle Eza! Hi. Abigail, darling. Why ain't you home in bed? Map? What map? Where the treasure is buried. I found it in the attic. Uh, Supper and catfish. Isn't that the map? It has been some funkies in the corner. Yes, sir. This is a genuine article. There's no doubt about it. Do you know what this is? It's a map of Bird Island. There's Sandpeep Cove and there's the Narrows. Forty paces from Granite Rock. X marks the spot. I can find it in the dark. Abigail, you found something. Can we go look for it? Can we? We're going just as soon as I can get out of here. Come on, then. I can't come on. I'm locked in. Haven't you got a key? No. Well, can't you tear the bars out? The bars? The way you did in that French prison. I don't think so. They weren't rusted in the way these are. Can't you dig your way out? Well, I haven't got anything to dig with. Oh. Why not set fire to it? You always think of the hardest way to do things. Maybe I can get a wrench from somebody. Abigail, don't go and tell everybody I'm trying to escape. Abigail, Abigail, John, any sign of that? No. Oh, well, look, find her, look, do something, do something. I will, don't worry, Miss Prentice. Oh, Abigail, Abigail, Abigail. Have you seen Abigail? There doesn't seem to be any key, Uncle Angel. Johnny scores me, old fellow, once who broke out of jail with an axe. That's no use. Johnny told me if you want to open a door, all you have to do is to just kind of tap the lock like this. It's no use. Well, what do you think of that? Oh, Uncle Ava, you're wonderful. I never saw the jail yet I couldn't break out of. Don't forget the map. Oh. That's right. Can't find a treasure without a map. Don't worry, Betsy Ann. She's probably on the boat. Oh, hi, Betsy Ann. A box there. Uh. Abigail, Aunt Marcia's furious with you. But Uncle Aza is going to be rich. I found the map of Ethan Grundy's treasure. Is that true, Aza? She found the map, all right. Hey, Tom, would you like to shove off tonight and go over to Bird Island and look for treasure? Sure, Aza. Why not? Betsy Ann, you better take Abigail home. Marcia's liable to be a bit upset. I will, Uncle Aza. Well, goodbye, darling. Be a good girl. Good luck, Uncle Aza. And I hope you don't meet the ghost of those two tourists. Oh, come on, Tom. Sure, Aza. Good night, darling. Good night, Tom. Betsy Ann. Hmm? I have an idea. Another one? A good one. Well, what is it? Suppose you and I, instead of going home... Yes? What's this all about, Aza? Do you think there's really treasure on Bird Island? Heavens, no. Unless I go take a look, Abigail would never forgive me. <laughs> oh, Aza, in some ways, I think you're the biggest fool I ever knew. I'm only five foot nine and my stock and feet. Is the sheriff in, Mrs. Pengast? Well, uh, he's awfully busy. But come in, Aza. Come in, Tom. Well, we'd like to see him. It's very important. What are you doing here, Aza? I broke jail. Now, you didn't go bust no locks down there or nothing, did you? Oh, no, no. I left everything just as it was. Yeah? I suppose I have to take you back there and lock you up again. Where are my shoes, Ma? Oh, oh ju just a minute, Sheriff. I was wondering if you couldn't let me off for a couple of days. Well, I suppose it is kind of lonesome for you down there. Uh, oh, no, 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 it ain't that. 
But you see, Tom and me got a line on a treasure over in Bird Island. When you aim to go there at night? Well, I know it's kind of against my schedule, but I'd like to go if you can fix it. I thought maybe you could add on the time I took off to the other end of my sentence. Hmm. If you forget what you told me about the mackerel run? No, but I'd still like to go. When'd you figure on getting back? Well, it won't take more than a full day. Maybe sooner. Well, it ain't regular. Oh, let him go, if he's fool enough to do it. Huh? Well, Ma says it's all right. I guess it's all right. Go oh. ahead, Ada. Well, thanks, Mrs. Pengast. Come on, Tom. Hi, Asa. Hi, Jake. I want to meet Dr. Chester and his sister. How do you do? Up from the city. He's a professor. How do you do? This is a pleasure, I assure you. Same here. But I ain't got no time to stop and chat. Tom Squires and me are going over to Bird Island to dig for treasure. See? I've got the map right here in black and white. Oh, an old map. Oh, interesting. Hey, sir, can't you tell the folks about the time you strangled that wild cat with your bare hands? Oh, not tonight, Jake. Come on, Tom. Give me that map, Mr. Chester. All night, folks. <laughs> Watch out for squirrels, they sir. A lot of them out on Bird Island. When we get the treasure, I'm going to buy that in just so as I can fire that smart aleck. What treasure? I thought you said you were doing this just for Abigail. Well, <laughs> you can't hang a man for hoping, can you? <laughs> well, Dr. Chester, I guess now you know everything about Stanbury Port. Yes, Jake. Sister and I certainly appreciate all the information you've given us. <laughs> oh, uh, couldn't I get you a cigar or something? No, Doctor. Why, you already give me a dollar. That's plenty. Well, good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Thank you. Come on, Mabel. You and I are going to charter a boat to get to that bird island. That map looked like the McCoy. Wait. I'm not going to chase around deserted islands at night. Why, well, you haven't even got a rod. I'll get one. Come on. Abigail isn't home yet. Hadn't we better go back and talk to her? No. I don't seem to feel conversational tonight. The old walrus. I take it you don't like the lady. Mm. Nearly married her once. Come back here! Come back here, Ada! I, I, I'll find you two to the foot of the extent of the law! What have you done with that child? Where is Abigail? Come back here! Along under a sky of blue, I dream, and every dream brings you. Drifting along over the rolling sea, it seems. Broke our word now, young lady. You promised me you'd go home. No, I didn't. I only promised that I wouldn't ask to go again. Betsy Ann, I thought I told you to take Abigail home. I know it, Uncle Asa, but she said that if I didn't sew away with her, she'd tell Aunt Marshall that Tom and I had planned to elope. What you need, young lady, is a good spanking. 
But you wouldn't want me to tell our Marsh about those letters I borrowed, would you? Young lady, you're going to get in a lot of trouble someday with that borrowing business. But I thought you said pirates took just whatever they wanted. Make way for a big bad pirate. With the yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum, you better beware, for here I come with a loaded gun. Save a drone and an old of her right arm, 600 pieces of eight. Left arm, 500. Right leg, 500. Left leg, 400. For the loss of an eye, 100. And for the loss of a finger, the same as for an eye. Keep your hand up, Abigail. If it were 600 pieces of eight, <laughs> I guess I'd better. Handy. Yeah, now watch your step. I heard something. Shh. Be quiet, Abigail, while I finish. All right, but my arm is getting awfully tired. Pirates' arms aren't supposed to get tired. If any man conceals any treasure captured, or fails to place it in the general fund, or violates any of the covenants of this brotherhood, he shall be marooned, alone on a deserted island, with one loaf of bread, one bottle of water, and a pistol. Now, all those in accordance with these articles will signify by saying, aye. Aye! aye. Now we're just the same as pirates. They're daffy. They think they're pirates. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Hooray! Oh, sixteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Jimmy and the devil has done for the rest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Oh, sixteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Now those badges make you boys sure enough deputies. But don't worry, I'll do the arrest and I'll do that. He's in charge with kidnapping and jailbreak. I wish you'd let me make the pinch. I'd like to see Ace's face. Oh, no, no. Say, so, Sheriff, how long a term can they give a man for kidnapping? I don't think more than 300 years, Miss Prentice. Well, that's none too wrong. Come on, come on. Come on, get going. Go on, get going. Right, Tucky, I lost a dollar bill. Yeah. 
devil has done for the rest. Yo! Did you hear that, Aza? Hooray! We found it! I knew it was here all the time. Did you, Uncle Aza? Then why didn't you come and get it? Huh? Oh, 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 I guess I just never could find the time. Oh, Tom, isn't it marvelous? You know what this means for us, don't you, Betsy Ann? All right, Tom, come on. Okay, here you. we go. Me help. Oh, Sammy. Wait for them at the house. Shiver my timbers. Aren't we a dangerous crew? You betcha. Now I can buy Marsha that new hat. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about treasures. I've been finding them all my life. Well, come on, Tom. Okay. Let's go. Oh, 16 men on the dead man's chest. You, and... you know, I think I'll turn professional. We'll divide the treasure according to our agreement. I'm glad we took the pirate too. Uh, Tom, you and Betsy Ann run down to the ship and get some blankets and some canned goods. We'll stay here tonight and shove off for the mainland in the morning. Okay, Skipper. Come on, Betsy Ann. You know, I think I'll turn professional and make hunting treasures my life's work. Wherever you go, I'm going too. Well, I, I'm not so sure about that. You see, I was thinking of going up the Amazon River, and it's chock full of crocodiles. And crocodiles don't like little girls. Oh, yes, they do. Crocodiles like little girls. Since they named Abigail. Thanks for digging that up for me. It saved me a lot of trouble. For land's sakes, where'd you come from? Never mind where I came from. Two boats. That may mean trouble. Jake, you stay here in case you try to get away. Oh, let me go with you, Now, sure. do as I say. That's one more thing I've got to thank Aza for. Come on, don't stand there talking. Come on. I said, put up your hands while I search you. And I said, come, Sonia, I won't do it. So that's the way you want to play, huh? Give me that gun, you little brat. Give me that gun. Ooh. Here it is, Uncle Eza. Well, good girl, Uncle Eza. Now we'll see who's running things. Good for you, Uncle Eza. Put that gun down, I tell you. Shot all right. Sure as your foot high. Bill, you stay here with the youngsters. Don't let them get away. Okay, sir. Come on, Miss Prentice. I'll stay right where you are, children. I'm gonna tear you apart. Run, Uncle Aza. It sounds like she means it. What's happened? Oh, who shot him? That old man with the child he just ran out of here. He's a planet. He's dead, all right. How does it happen? Tom! Tom! That's the end! That's the end! Tom! Tom! Why, Jake, what are you doing out here on this island? No law against a man coming here, is he? What are you doing with that gun? Killing Indians? Indians nothing. I guess you think I ain't got nerve enough to shoot a man. Uh, you ain't got nerve enough to shoot a fly. Oh, is that so? Well, you just go up there and take a look in that farmhouse. Maybe you'll change your mind. He just shot a man up there. Honest. Mm-hmm. You bet you I did. Shot him dead in a mackerel. Well, that's too bad. I'm here as a deputy sheriff. Hand over that gun. Well, sure, Jake. I gotta put you under arrest. Under arrest? Why? Well, it was all just an accident. Yeah, I'll bet. There he is, Sheriff. Murder and a kidnapper. There he is. There he is. There he is. Why, what's the matter, Marsha? Trying to appear innocent, aren't you? Now, just a minute, Miss Prentice. Bill, you and Jake go up the house and carry the body down. Take care of that Chester woman. All right, Sheriff. Come on, Jake. Asa did the killing, Sheriff. I dragged a confession out of her. Well, that's good work. Now get going, boys. Well, Asa, that true what Jake says? You confessed to the shooting? Well, yes, sort of. But land's sake, Sheriff, she grabbed me and started to tussle. <laughs> the lady attacked you, I suppose. Looks like you're in an awful mess this time. 
I hate to do this, but... Now, what the... Let me help you, Sheriff. No, 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 don't tear that. These treacherous things. Hold out your hand. I'm sorry to do this, Hazel. But you must have a lawyer, Mr. Plunkett. The firm of Bridges, McGonigal and Stevens has a battery of trained legal minds. And that's just what you need before the coroner's inquest. Oh, shucks, Mr. Bridges. I can't afford no lawyer. What do you mean you can't afford a lawyer? You're a wealthy man, Mr. Plunkett. Do you know the value of that treasure? He's right, Aza. You're a rich man. Huh? Oh, come right in, Sheriff. Hi, Aza. Uh, howdy, Mayor. Oh, Aza. Mayor, I want you to meet Mr. Bridges from New York. I guess he's going to be my attorney. How do you do? Glad to know you, Mr. Bridges. He said the sheriff and me just talked over the long-distance phone to the attorney general. He says you ain't got no right to that treasure. What does he mean, I ain't got no right? He says that treasure legally belongs to the city of Stanburyport, seeing as how Ephraim Plunkett collected it from all the folks in town before the British come. Well, I guess it does sort of belong to the city at that. All right. As soon as I get out of here, I'll go and find me a treasure for myself. Personnel. Don't get too premature about getting out, either. The coroner's inquest is set for next Tuesday. They sent for a special deputy from Providence, a fellow named Tilbury. Horace Tilbury. <laughs> uh, he's a distant cousin of mine, on my mother's side. Then I guess we can't have him. They mentioned another deputy named Benham. Not related to him, are you? Ezra Benham? Ezra Benham? No, I don't recollect him. Mm. Although I got a lot of relatives in politics. Yes, I guess he is some sort of a cousin. Maybe I better get a list of all the deputy coroners they got, Asa, and submit it to you. That's a good idea, Mayor. I'll pick one out for you. Say, Sheriff, Jake just phoned over from the inn and said that Chester woman was leaving town. Leaving town? Yeah. We'd better get on over there, Sheriff. Goodbye, Mr. Burgess. Goodbye. Goodbye, Asa. You lock up, Bill. Oh, uh, Mr. Plunkett, I, uh, that is... Well, I just recall some business for Bridges, McGonagall, and Stevens that may occupy the rest of my week. You're running out on Aza just because he's lost the treasure. Not at all, not at all. Oh, that's all right, Tom. Let him go. I don't need no lawyer anyway. Well, goodbye, Mr. Bridges, and thanks for coming to see me. Goodbye, Mr. Plunkett, and good luck. Come on, Tom. Got to lock up now. Oh, speaking of good luck, Tom, did I ever tell you about the time I was digging clams over at Small Point? Aza, you don't seem to take this situation seriously. Do you know that Tuesday you may be indicted for murder? Shucks. All this fuss about me. I don't need no lawyer. I've been fighting my own battles all my life. I don't need no help now. Sorry to have to insist on it, Miss Chester, but you can't leave Stamberryport until after the coroner's inquest. You said Ace Plunkett attacked your brother, didn't you? Don't you want to see him brought to justice? Yes, but this place will be a nightmare. The very thought of staying appalls me. The newspaper men, the photographers. Now, you don't want me to have to take you into custody as a material witness, do you? Huh? Then you'd arrest me? Well, well. Oh, shame. I don't want to arrest you if you do as I say. Jake, take the lady's bags back upstairs. And Jake, remember you're a deputy. See that she don't leave town. Count on me, Sheriff. Now, see here, Betsy Ann. I've lived a lot longer than you have, and I'm a very much better judge of character. And I tell you that Tom Squires and Aza Plunkett are just as alike as two peas in a pod. But I love Tom, Aunt Marcia. Oh, love, love. That's all you young people think of these days. Now, see here, I've locked Abigail up in her room. Unless you give me your word, you'll get the same treatment. Now. Oh! Oh, Lily! Where are you going with that? Uh, just taking the laundry down to Mr. Sharp's. Oh, all right, go on, go on. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they finally decided on a man by the name of Knickerbocker. Who is this man, Knickerbocker? Hey, hey, where are you two going? Oh, Bill, can we see Asa for a minute? We're on our way down to Mrs. Sharp's for the laundry, and Asa said he'd have a letter ready to send to Abigail. So Go ahead, can... make it snappy. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, he's coming down here special from Providence. Asa said he heard he was a good man. That's so. Well, we need a good man. Hello, Asa. Hello, John. Right in, Libby. Hello, Asa. Well, how are you? Well, this looks like Christmas. What do you got in the basket? Laundry. Abigail. How are you, Uncle Aza? Um, I 
once you locked me in my room, but I made Nibby and Johnny smuggle me out. Well, you could have walked in to see your Uncle Asa. Oh, no. Pirates don't do things that way. I know something about Libby. She likes Johnny. You don't say. Yes, and I told her if she didn't smuggle me in to see you, I'd tell her Marcia. Abigail, Abigail, I've got to get you home or I'll lose my job. All right, Libby. I've got something for you, Uncle Asa. Huh? Will you use this on the jewelry if they don't let you go? I will, shipmate. Promise? I'll murder every last one of them. And I've got something else for you. <laughs> These are for the judge. The judge? Mm. <laughs> That's the judge. Eh, eh, eh. Describe the scene in your own words. Well, as I said, Mr. Knickerbocker, I was sitting there in the boat when Asa come running along with a gun in his hand and a wild look in his eyes, and I says, Would you say that Mr. Plunkett had the general appearance of a man who was running away? Yes, sir, I would. Positively. All right, continue. Well, he started to brag him to me about shooting Dr. Chester. I let him on. Then as soon as I trapped him into admitting he killed him, I arrested him. That's all. Anything you want to ask you, Mr. Plunkett? I wouldn't waste my breath. No, sir. As a student and a professor, no matter the hour, my brother could never resist the impulse to explore. Would you say that your brother was a man who was habitually armed? Oh, no. My brother never owned a weapon in his life. We only borrowed Mr. Gilpatrick's in case we encountered wild animals on the island. What would you particularly say motivated your trip to Bird Island? Well, my brother heard Mr. Plunkett say he expected to find revolutionary antiques. And if you know classical students, antiques are irresistible. Well, that's all right, John. You can go. You can go. Yes, Miss Price. Now, Miss Chester, describe the shooting as best you can. Oh. I must die. Pull yourself together, Miss Chester. No. Now, take your time. Oh. Well, I think Mr. Plunkett misunderstood my brother's presence on the island. Yes. Go on. Well, there's very little to say. When my brother asked for permission to see the antiques, Mr. Plunkett rushed across the floor and flung himself upon poor George. <laughs> oh, it was awful. I screamed, but what could a woman do? When my brother reached for the revolver we had rented from Mr. Gilpatrick, the brute snatched it from his grasp and without giving him a chance, he pulled the trigger. That's all, and thank you, Miss Chester. Your witness, Mr. Plunkett? No. I won't have no truck with her. She's a liar. Oh! Oh, I knew it was so insulted and all my life. Abigail Prentice. Will you come up here and sit by the desk? Have you got them? Got what? The knives. The pistol. Oh, yeah, sure, certainly. Let me see. No. We don't want anybody to know. Oh, all right. The witness will not speak to Mr. Plunkett. Don't you use that tone to Abigail. I don't like it. Mr. Plunkett will be seated. Now, see here, young fella. You stop ordering me around. I recommended you for this job, and I don't mind telling you I'm plumb sorry I done it. Silence. Go ahead, honey. Now, Abigail, I'm going to be very patient with you, because I realize that you're a little girl, and all this may be very confusing to you. Oh, no, sir. I understand everything. Uncle Asa said so yesterday. So, you've talked to your Uncle Asa since he's been in custody. And how did that happen? Oh, I smuggled myself in to see him. You see, I'm a pirate. Well, that's very interesting. But now we'll get ahead with the actual shooting of Mr. Chester. You were in the room 
when it happened, weren't you? Yes, sir. But wouldn't you rather hear about the time Uncle Asa killed the two tourists? That was really better. So your Uncle Asa committed murder before? Oh, lots of times. You'd better let him go. Otherwise, there's no telling what he may do. Oh, is that so? Yes. You know, he was the man who ran down and sank that Coast Guard boat off Indian Island. He's really dangerous. Now, just a minute, Abigail. Can't you tell the difference between when I'm spinning yarns and when I'm telling the truth? I'm just trying to help you, Uncle Laser. Sit down, Mr. Plunkett. Yes, sir. Yes, go on, Abigail. I'm just thinking of those people. Do you know what my Uncle Laser told me about them? No. What did he tell you? Well, you don't want them hurt, do you? You wouldn't want to see them killed, would you? What do you mean? Well, my Uncle Asa said if they didn't let him go, he was going to shoot every one of them. But he hasn't a gun. Oh, yes, he has. Abigail, you certainly have helped me plenty. I smuggled them into his cell. You stand there and tell those deliberate lies. They're not lies. I was telling the truth. Abigail, you've had something coming to you for a long time. And now you're going to get it. you were, Abigail. Oh, Ada Plunkett, you're a fool. I may be a fool, but she's no liar. She's telling the gospel truth. Oh. I don't believe a word they said. He's just spinning yarns for that child. But you can't overlook the testimony of Chester's sister. There's no reason for her to lie. What about Jake Hutchinson? He said Asa admitted that he killed him. Wait a minute. But they say he never did like Asa. Mr. Foreman, have you arrived at a verdict? Yes, we have. What is the verdict? We think that Asa should be held for a regular trial as soon as court opens next month. Does that mean he can go home? No. And he's got you to thank for it for telling all those naughty fibs. who have to go back to New York, all on account of you. You, you wouldn't want me to risk my whole future, would you? All I know is I won't have no truck with you until you do the right thing. Abigail, get back to your room. You know what your Aunt Marcia said. Johnny, won't you drive me down to see Uncle Asa? I can't leave town until I can say goodbye to him. You can't do it, Abigail. But he'll depend on seeing me. You go back upstairs, Abigail. You don't want to see that old high binder. Don't you talk that way about my Uncle Asa? If you don't take me, I'll drive it myself. You drive the car. <laughs> How you talk, Tom. Yes, I do talk. Do you want me to talk, Tom? Or are you going to drive me down to see Uncle Laser? Uh, I'll, I'll only be a jiffy, Libby. Land's sake, John. You heard Miss Prentice say you're to keep that child in tow until leaving time. I certainly feel like talking. Well, I wish John would feel the same way. 
Come on, Abigail, come on. What do you want? Uh, she's leaving for New York this afternoon. She wants to say goodbye to the old man. We'll have to talk to him through the bar. I go right in his cell like I used to. No, no, Abigail. Aza's a sure enough prisoner now. Aza, Abigail wants to talk to you. Now, don't be too long, Abigail. These visits ain't regular. Uncle Aza. Abigail, now what do you want? Abigail, now what do you want? Uh, she's leaving for New York this afternoon. She wants to say goodbye to the old man. We'll have to talk to him through the bar. I go right in his cell like I used to. No, no, Abigail. Aza's a sure enough prisoner now. Aza, Abigail wants to talk to you. Now, don't be too long, Abigail. These visits ain't regular. Uncle Aza. Hello there. Uncle you heard what the sheriff said, Abigail. No. You see, I've been promoted as a prisoner. Promoted? Yes. The time was when they'd just as soon let me go. But now they've decided to keep me. And Marcia is taking me back to New York, Uncle Laser. Is that so? I wish you were going with us. Yes. I'd kind of like to be going with you myself. Uncle Laser, Betsy Ann says I'm to blame for your being locked up. Betsy Ann is wrong. I tried to scare them. Now, I guess some of them didn't think I was quite as bad as you made me out. I don't think you're bad. I love you. Do you, darling? Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? No. Pirates don't kiss. You kissed me when I came up from New York. Well, pirates might kiss hello, but not goodbye. I don't care what pirates do. I wish I could come in there and kiss you goodbye. I love you. Wait a minute, Abigail. Maybe I can fix it. Thank you, Johnny. You start crying. You got plenty of years ahead of you for crying. Now, a lot of folks have told you that your Uncle Ace is just an old liar and a no good. And maybe from their point of view, he's he is. But there's one thing I want to tell you. You can always believe it. You're the sweetest thing that ever came into my life. You and one other. And I love you. Now, go on home, honey. Come on, Johnny. Take her. There's some things harder to take than a jail sentence. Come on, honey. No! You've had this door open again. How'd you get it open? I picked the lock, Sheriff, with a hairpin. 
Someday I'll show you how I do it. Abigail, you wait here a minute. I just happen to think I want to see somebody. Yeah, you've got Miss Chester still in town? Yes, sir. She's upstairs. Do you want me to ring her? No, I'll go right up. Uh, what's the room number? Uh, 212. Thanks. Right. Scores is the name. I'm from Brooklyn. That means nothing to me. You don't know me, but I know you. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Once I spent a little time in a big house up a certain river. I remember one visiting day, you came up there to see a fella. Must have been two other people. No, it wasn't. I know all about you, Mabel. And I know all about that guy who was killed on Bird Island. Johnny Scores. Oh, yes, I remember you. Say, so you were tied up with the Jackman gang, weren't you? That's got nothing to do with this case. Listen, sister, you're going with me and square that old man. Uh, that's what you think. What's your angle, friend? I haven't got any angles. I'm just interested in doing something for a little kid who's waiting outside for me. You mean that Prentice kid? That's just who I mean. I see they finally got your Uncle Asa where he belongs. Well, when he gets out, I'm going to ask him to do something for me. What's that? I'll give you a spanking for being so mean. Hello, Abigail. How are you today? Did Johnny come in here? Yes, he went upstairs. Room 212. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Are you holding this back so long won't help you any? Well, that's all past. I'm talking about right now. Under the circumstances, it seems like a good time for you to mind your own business. Say, listen, your skirts ain't so clean. I wonder that your boss know that you're an ex-mobster. Well, I don't care who knows about that. I spotted you at the coroner's inquest. Come on, now, I'll spill everything I know. I'll let you do as I say. I think he's right, Steve. Now, what do you want us to do? Come on, get your things on. We gotta get out of here. You sure bank that shop, won't you, Steve? Where they go? They went that way. Hurry, Johnny. Just pass some little boys. Hurry up. Let's make it fast, men. Hello. Hello. Hello, Miss Prentice. Please, Johnny, wake up. Please. 
some more right now. That road doubles back. Here, hold on to my arm tight. We might hit some rough spots, but I'll be careful. You're not badly hurt, but I'm glad you didn't get away. Is this the time, officer? Oh, so you just couldn't quite make the curve, eh? They're bad, bad pirates, Mr. Officer. Pirates? Uh-huh. And if you will take them to my Uncle Laser, he'll handle them just like pirates should be handled. He's killed hundreds and hundreds of them with his bare hands. Looks like you're in for it, lady. <laughs> Come on. All right, boy. Take it right up. Yes. Come along. Come along, dear. Hurry up. May I go home, Aunt Marcy? But, Abigail, don't you want to be here for the ceremony? No. I'd feel awfully tired. And maybe I'd better take a nap. Now you're talking like a sensible little girl. John, you see that Libby and the child get home. Yes, Miss Prentice. And Libby, you see that she gets a nice nap and that she doesn't kick the covers off, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Bless you. Come along, come along, Betty Come in. Bye, Abby. Bye. Sheriff wants to see you, ain't it? Can he come in here? No, come on with me. Who did you say told you? You remember Ben Hackett from up Augusta Way? Oh, well, if he told you, it must be true. Come on, he said. Oh. <gasps> well, what's all this about? Looks like a lynching party. No, no, Aza. This time we have good news for you. We made an awful mistake in your case, Aza. And we're mighty sorry for it. Oh, that's all right, Sheriff. Didn't Jake and Tom tell you? No, Jake just told me you wanted to see me. Tom was mighty mysterious. Uh, he told me one thing, though, I was mighty glad to hear. Guess I owe you an apology, Asa. I'm sorry I traded you some mean. Oh, that's all right, Jake. Well, sir, thanks to Johnny's scores, we found out that the fellow you killed is wanted for murder down in Florida. And you get the $10,000 reward. <sighs> but wh what about that Chester woman? Oh, the state police are taking care of her. Oh, that's fine. Now, with that reward, I can buy that, uh... Now, don't say it, Acer. Don't say it. I can buy my own hats. And one more thing, Acer. We think in killing that fellow, you did sort of a service to Stanbury Port. Well, that's nice of you to say that, Mayor. Well, we sort of decided, in view of all your trouble, we owed you something. And, uh, we're going to give you back the treasure. Oh! Thanks, Mayor. That's fine. <laughs> Sheriff? Does that mean that I'm a free man and ain't no prisoner anymore? You're free, all right, Aza. Of course, I've got to draw up some papers, make it sort of legal. <clears throat> Suffering catfish, am I happy? Well, so long, everybody. Oh, uh, you sure you won't come with me, Tom? No, Aza. Well, goodbye, everybody. Oh, Aza, Aza, just a minute. There's, uh, there's something I want to say. Well, you'll have to make it quick. I'm on my way. <laughs> well, go on and talk. What's on your mind, Marsha? Uh, Aza, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry for everything. Oh, that's all right. 
But there's something you can do if you really want to make up. Oh, anything, anything you say, Aza. Now, Tom Squires is going to be rich with his share of the treasure. Uh -huh. Will you let Betsy Ann marry him when he turns 21? Why, of course, Aza. I always intended that they should marry when he came of age. Well, that'll be about a week from next Friday, as far as oh. I can figure. <laughs> Aza, do you think it'd be possible for us to pick up the threads where we left them off so many, many years ago? Huh? What do you think? I <laughs> know. Ah, now, I guess we're growing too old. Who's too old? I never felt spry in my life. Well, I could strangle a wildcat with my bare hands. Could you? Yes. Well, Asa, what do you say if I write to that man who made the blueprints for the wing we were going to put on the house? Hutchinson, you know. Well, why not? I'm perfectly willing. Besides, we don't have to ask your mother's consent now. You know, I never did like that woman. Now, look here, Aza Plunkett. Don't you talk against my mother. I ain't saying anything against her. But I can think, can't I? Now, well, I'll talk it over with you when I get back. Where are you going? Up to the banks. I just heard the good news. Ben Hackett says the mackerel are starting to run. Mackerel? Why, you young scalawag. Where did you come from? I'm going to the banks. The mackerel are starting to run. They sure are. And when we come back, Uncle Aza, can I go with you for that treasure at the Amazon River? Amazon River? Treasure? Oh, yes. I was going to tell you about that treasure. You see, one time Captain Kidd was sailing down the African coast. Ephraim Plunkett was with him. He was your great, great granduncle. He was a hero, just like you. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs>